What you guys did, I'm going to take a look at the B-Link SER Pro, and we also taking a look at the Mate SE. So if you're looking to replace your aging desktop PC for something smaller that also has plenty of storage, can play your games, and also has a powerful Ryzen 7 H255 processor with 8 cores and 16 threads in it, then this little setup might be for you. So these are all the contents of both of the products out on the desk here. So we'll take a look at the mini PC first. This is the mini PC on the left. We're going to have our user manual. This will tell you exactly what you can do and how to set it up. It's very simple and easy to do. We also have a HDMI cable here, very short HDMI cable, but that does come in a kit. UK plug for this one, but yours will be whatever plug is in your country. And we have the Hunt key, external uh, power source here, power brick and adapter. So you can see it's got a little barrel jack on the end of it. And again, these are pretty uh, decent uh, power adapters. So you've got no worries there. And you'll get them mini PC itself, which we'll go through and take a look at some of the specs. Now the Mate SE is a docking station, basically. You get your user manual and it will also have a couple of connectors here so you can connect it to the mini PC. And there is the Mate SE right here. This docking station will have a load of ports on it and also extra uh, two NVMe slots on there as well. So let's take a look at the mini PC first. This is the silver version. They do two different versions. On the top, those little holes there, that is the microphone array. And we also have on the left, the power button, the clear CMOS next to that 3.5 millimeter audio jack, type C, which is 10 Gbps. And also that is a data port as well. And we have also a USB 3.2, and that is also supporting 10 Gbps as well on that port. Now the microphone array, your AI voice, interaction it has built-in speakers and built-in microphone and also we have auto power on on this as well taking a look at the rear we have up the top there that huge exhaust area which is going to allow the heat to dissipate on the unit itself to keep the unit nice and cool starting on the right hand side we have our dc in to power the device a usb 4 which is 4 gbps supported and we have a hdmi 4k 240 hertz port there and below that we have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack port next to that we have our dp which is 1.4 4 gigahertz at 240 hertz and a usb 2.0 that supports 400 mbps and we have another usb 3.2 10 gbps port on there as well so plenty of ports the ethernet port is your 2.5 gigabit ethernet lan port on there as well for your network so plenty of decent ports on here you can have up to three monitors on this particular device and some ventilation on the bottom we'll have a look inside of that in a second let's take a look at the mate se this is your docking station this is for uh, your storage you can see we have a sd card slot here for added storage and inside this unit as well there will be two m.2 slots where we can populate those with more storage and you can raid those as well for super fast speeds and there we have some more ports. Starting from the left, we have another 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and a USB 3.0 port and a USB-C 80 Gbps uh, port there as well. And the other one is if you wanted to connect a power source to it in case you needed more power. But in my testing, it works perfectly fine with just a connection uh, from the mini PC to the actual uh, dock. And this can have up to 16 terabytes of storage in here, which is going to basically replace your desktop computer. It supports M.2 2280 PCI Express uh, 3.0, 4.0 and 5.0 SSDs, which means you're going to get that super fast speeds uh, with this particular device as well. And this is what it looks like if you have it mounted on the bottom and using that connector. There's two connectors, a smaller one in case you want it on the bottom. And if you want it on the top, you can use the bigger connector for connecting it to the top. So it just depends on whether you want it on the bottom or on the top. Let me just quickly show you what it looks like on the uh, top here. Just need to remove the small connector and move this over to the top of the mini PC right here. And we can then plug in our larger connector, which will then reach to that same port to connect it up there. Now, of course, once you've got these connected, that will be perfectly powered for all your devices that are plugged into this mini PC. And again, with that dock, it just gives you the extra added storage. So if you do need extra storage, you'll now have four 
uh, M.2 slots on here, which should give you plenty of storage. But if you need more, you can always plug in an external uh, hard drive to this, or you can use that SD card uh, slot as well for more storage on there. So plenty of storage, plenty of processing power on this device and plenty of ports as well. So this is definitely a desktop PC replacement. And I would definitely say you could easily replace your aging desktop PC with something like this. So let's open these devices up so we can see what it looks like inside. Now, the mini PC, as far as I know, you just have to remove these rubber grommets here and basically undo these four screws. And this will be able to gain access to inside the actual mini PC. You can pull that little tab and it will pop up. Let me just do this off camera here, just in case there's a little cable. There we go. And now we've got it out and it looks like this. There's our two speakers. This is for your built-in audio for your DSP audio amplifier and speakers. And this should give you plenty of nice quality sound through these particular speakers as well, if you want to watch movies or something like that. This little mesh covering will come off and you need to keep that clean because there'll be dust going in and out of here. So it's advisable to wipe that as it says on the actual mesh cover there. And once we remove this, there is a little tiny ribbon cable there. So be careful when you remove this. There is another heat sink inside here where we have our two drives here. These can take two four terabyte drives in this particular, in this mini PC. And if you're using the uh, dock as well, you'll get another two drives which you can put in there as well. If you're wondering where the memory is, it's soldered memory on this particular device. So make sure you buy the one with the most memory, like 32 gigs like this one's got. And that should be plenty for your mini PC. Looking at the mate here, we can see we do have two drive slots inside here, which we can populate, supporting up to 16 terabytes total. And again, we've got a nice fan in there to keep it nice and cool. So this is going to be a great addition for people that want that extra storage. And you can add more storage in here. And you can also raid this as well if you wanted to. And you can get some pretty good speeds on it. If I dropped a couple of drives in here or just one drive in here, you can expect speeds of 3,382 MBS, which is plenty powerful for another storage solution right here. Here is the full specifications. As you can see, CPU is a Ryzen 7 H255. This is eight cores, 16 threads. Your base clock is 3.8 gigahertz with boosting up to 4.9 gigahertz with L3 cache of 16 megabytes. It does have a Radeon 780M with 12 cores, 2,600 megahertz of graphics. And also the RAM is LPDDR5X which is 7,500 megahertz. And there's 32 gigabytes of that inside here. That's eight gigabytes times four soldered to the motherboard. You've got Wi-Fi 6, that's AX200 and Bluetooth 5.2. Both of the M.2 slots are 2280 and they are PCI Express 4.0 times four, and they will support up to four terabytes in each one of those slots. Now this little mini PC is capable of playing AAA listed games. At reasonable frames you might need to drop the uh, resolution down to 720p on some of those games and it can play 1080p games as well so it does support rdna free and also what you've got to remember it is on board graphics so it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card so there's going to be some limitations there but it can play games at reasonable frame rates so what is the cost of this mini PC? Well, you can look to pay around about $519 for this particular mini PC if you go to their manufacturer's website. But you might be able to find it cheaper elsewhere if you look around. Let's take a look at some benchmarks. So let's first take a look at the system specs here. It is running Windows 11 Pro 24H2. And if Windows is not your thing, then you can always install Linux on here if you wanted to. Uh, and that would work perfectly fine as well. You can expect 5,151 reads and 4,733 writes on that crucial drive that is installed on that mini PC. Remember, you do have another drive bay in there which you can populate, but you can see the information on the screen. During my testing, I found the cooling on this mini PC to be absolutely fantastic. The mini PC suffered no power issues or no thermal throttling. And I run Cinebench and all the other benchmark software on here, which you'll see shortly. And we had no thermal issues whatsoever, which really means you're not going to have any thermal issues with a mini PC like this. Take a look at the CPU uh, stats here. You can see that is the actual CPU, which we talked about, Ryzen 7255. And it gives you all your specifications right there on the screen. 
I'll show you the motherboard as well. It's probably going to be the AZW, and there it is right there. SER9, and you can see we have some other specifications on here as well. If you want to pause the screen, you can do. Memory, like I said, is on board. There is no upgrade path for this particular memory on this particular mini PC. So bear that in mind. This one has 32 gigabytes of that, but it is pretty fast as well, which gives you a much more better boost compared to previous versions of this uh, mini PC. I'm going to have a look at the graphics settings right here. Now, this does have the Radeon uh, 780M in here, and this will give you plenty. You see the memory size has been set to 4 gigabytes, and I should have checked inside the BIOS whether we can change it. I'm pretty sure we can. But you can see right here, let's do a quick CPU stress test with the CPU Z, and then we'll see what sort of uh, temps we can get here. Now, remember, we are just doing some testing here. You can do more extensive testing. You're never probably going to push this PC uh, like you're doing right here or when you're using Cinebench or anything like that. It's never going to go up that high. And you can see we have no real major temperature issues and there's no thermal throttling or any uh, other issues you can see on the screen. Now I'm running uh, Geekbench 6 here and you can see even when I'm running Geekbench 6 on the CPU, we're not having any thermal throttling or any of that. And I've seen this happen on many, many PC. But on this particular model, we're not having any issues. The single core score for that was 2,238 and the multi-core score was 11,987. Let's move on to the GPU tests on Geekbench 6 and we'll take a look at those. 29,855 is what you can expect if you're uh, benchmarking this on Geekbench 6. Let's move on to 3D game uh, benchmarks right here. The Time Spy score was 3,422. That is the graphics score 3,063 and the CPU score was 10,214. The overall score was 3,422 on Time Spy. Let's take a look at the onboard graphics test on 3D Mark to see what sort of scores we're going to get with this software as well, because obviously we're using onboard graphics and we're using Night Raid to test this. 30,362 was the overall score. The graphics score was 36,564 and the CPU score was 15,482. And that's using 3D Mark's Night Raid for onboard graphics. Just want to quickly do Cinebench here. This is another test that I see a lot of mini PCs cause major problems like thermal throttling and other issues. And I run this all the way through and I will give you the scores at the end. And we had no problems with thermal throttling or temperatures. It did go up to 80.4, but that was it. And you can see the score there. We have 15,955 points on Cinebench R23. Now, I'm also going to run the single core score, and you can see we're getting 1,732. And there was no thermal throttling with any of these tests on this mini PC, which means this mini PC's got outstanding cooling. Also, what we're going to look at here is the 4K streaming. And we're getting no problems with 4K streaming. So if you want to use this as a 4K streaming, and this is true 4K, what we're streaming right here on the screen, and we're having no problems whatsoever. So there was a couple of drop frames here and there during the startup of the actual video. And once it stabilized, there was no drop frames at all. So you can use this for your Plex Media server and things like that. If you want to play 4K videos, I'll do a 4K video test here so you can actually see playback is pretty decent on the Jellyfish 400 Mbps 4K Ultra HD HEVC 10-bit file. This is quite a difficult file to play. And you can see it's playing this 4K file, no problems whatsoever. Let me just do a quick uh, drag across here just to see whether it starts quickly. And I'm going to do that right here. And it should start up very quickly like so. No problems playing back these files. So pretty impressive. Now, I'm not going to be doing vast amounts of gaming tests here because remember, it is a mini PC and I don't think people are going to be buying this to play hardcore games. But it can play games, like I said, this is uh, Sniper Elite 2 Remastered, and you can see it's having no problem at all. Now, this is playing at 720p, but I'm pretty sure you could push this to 1080p. But just bear in mind, it is a mini PC, and you are using onboard graphics, but it is pretty smooth, like I said. So you should be able to play all your favorite games and choose the resolution that makes it work best for you. 
when you're playing it. So if you want to play Counter-Strike or any of those other ones like Fortnite, you should be able to play on this mini PC. And this just goes to show you how far mini PCs have come over the years. Mini PCs now are becoming really popular as desktop replacements because they're small, they're low powered. And again, like I said, you can play AAA listed games on some of these mini PCs, um, maybe at lower resolutions on some games, but it can play 1080p gaming as well. So like I said before, if you're looking to replace your aging desktop and you've got a Windows 10 PC and it doesn't fit the Windows 11 hardware requirements that Microsoft have in place, then you might be looking to replace your PC at some point. And this B-Link model is pretty decent. And one of the most important things I think with mini PCs is the thermals and cooling. And this seems to have a really good cooling system on it. And that's really important for a mini PC because obviously we, you need to dissipate heat from that mini PC to make it last. If it starts overheating, you're having thermal problems, then it's not good for that mini PC. As you can see right here, you can play games like this as well. It should play all the games in the Microsoft Store if you like playing small games like that. It'll be great for surfing, doing all your office work. It's got free ports for your display, so you can have free displays on here as well. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Uh, B-Link did send me this for review. I just wanted to point that out. All opinions are my own. No money's changed hands and no one is reviewing this video before it's released. So bear that in mind, guys. OK, anyway, but that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Links are in the video description. Bye for now.